Hey, it's Bill the Handyman up here in Northern California. How y'all doing today? Today we're looking at a Kenmore. This is actually the Space Saver version, so it's only like two feet across. Uh, been having a lot of people call me about smaller ones so they can fit in their cubby hole. So this one basically was not spinning. So what I normally do, um, as you can see this clutch, um, this clutch housing here has got some grease in it, got a little bit of grease in it, had a lot more. I've already uh, cleaned it out quite a bit. Uh, you can take some alcohol or brake cleaner and clean this out. Um, and then what I also do is I also put some etches on the side of this bell so that the clutch can grab. I etch all along the edge of this. And you can even put a cross hatch etch on it you can see the little lines I put in there and so that the clutch grabs a little bit better and so this is your clutch and so what I normally do is I stretch the spring out grab it with a vice grip on one side on both sides and just stretch it out a little bit and so you can see I stretched that out a little bit and make sure this is nice and clean. Um, usually if this plastic is worn down past the brass or near the brass, it's pretty much worn out. Um, I have actually uh, glued uh, pads on these sides here to beef up the clutch a bit. And this was originally how these things were designed. They had these pads on all these holes and over the years they figured they only needed three um, so that's what I do to uh, to clean the clutch and the steel wool <clears throat> I may also put some uh, etches in this pad too just so it grabs a little tighter make sure all the grease is cleaned off um, these are um, still looking fairly dirty, but I did clean them off with uh, a solvent. Um, now, worst case scenario, you can actually pull these up a little bit and stick a mm, piece of something underneath it to bring this up. You can see it comes up just a little bit. And that'll give you a little bit more uh, clutch pad to work with. And here's a little disclaimer for you. This video is for informational purposes only. Please consult your local professional if in doubt. Okay, so another thing we're going to check is the drive coupler. We can check it from here. As we move this, you can see the motor is moving. And over time, you'll be able to feel the transmission. If you keep turning it, you'll be able to feel the transmission grab. Usually if it's intact and feels fairly secure, then it's a good drive coupler. This drive coupler is kind of like the fuse in the system. And when, if you ever overload your machine, this thing tends to break instead of burning out the motor. Okay, in order to get the transmission out, <clears throat> you have to, of course, take the agitator off the top from the inside. And then there's these three bolts. They're half-inch bolts that hold the transmission in. And then... It's always good, uh, probably a good idea to spray a little silicone or a couple of drops on the top of the agitator shaft before you pull it out. So that make, makes it slide out real easy. Um, and if you, if you try and move this clutch with your finger, you try and move that clutch and that clutch moves, then that clutch needs to be replaced or rebuilt or reconditioned. And we take a look at this brake. This brake actually looks pretty good because it's sagging down. Um, if the brake is sticky, um, it's probably a good idea to put a couple of drops of oil in there and let it circulate around before you put that on. Make sure there's no excess oil. Basically, this is like brake shoes. In these brake shoes, sometimes they'll get rusty in here and stop abruptly when you uh, when you're machine goes uh, to the end of the cycle uh, if it stops abruptly then you could burn out your drive coupler and so also when that if this stops too abruptly 
you could um, crack your tub uh, because of the jolt and so uh, yeah something to think about okay so this brake has to be all the way up inside this bell here should see some clearance here if this is not all the way up you're gonna have a hard time getting the transmission all the way in um, so you can t turn this and push it all the way up in there look in here and see if you got any rust if you got any, got any rust you need to put a little bit of couple of maybe drops of oil and then just spin this thing around a couple times let that oil soak in make sure it's dry so no oil gets down back on the clutch again I always put a drop of oil on these things here too normally because they're rusty you can check out your base pads here these under on the top sides of these there's a plastic like skid I believe it's called a base pad you want to make sure all three of those are in good shape make sure you got your springs all, all in good shape and you should be good and so if your machine is leaking what you want to do is you want to check your water pump first you see a mineral trail coming down from that center uh, hole like a little uh, mineral trail a telltale drip sign then you need a new water pump if you look up in here look around on each side if you see any cracks around these things you got a crack in your tub I've got a couple other videos about how to fix that normally you want to take your basket out and patch both sides I've patched quite a few of them no problem I didn't have to replace the whole plastic um, professionally you would replace the whole plastic but I've had some pretty good luck with these um, Normally it happens on this side, this one. Typically if you move these things around and they bounce around and they'll bounce up against this and put pressure on that and crack these. Uh, you could also check your hoses. This hose here notoriously can spring leaks. Um, I actually have never seen a main seal leak on these, this direct drive model. So that's normally not a problem. Um, so, yeah, that's your tip for today. If you need any help, you can contact me, 707-443-8347. I give phone advice for $25. Thanks okay, for watching. Okay, so pull the agitator off. Normally, normally you have a 716th nut here. Some, they're a little bit different. But the typical direct drive Kenmore's are like this. So if you check your collar and your, ch your collar uh, looks like this, it all looks kind of good intact here um, and this is all lined up it's not falling down or anything you got to check your basket make sure there's no slop in it now is this normal movement here yes this is normal movement uh, there's nothing wrong with this uh, that i know of uh, typically these agitators the double ratcheting agitator will make noise yes that's normal uh, for uh, an older machine now if you look here you can see that there's nothing in that hole uh, right up front. Typically there should be, that door should be uh, right up against there. So that when you shut the door here, this switch is activated. Now this one is broken and it's been bypassed. So I'm just showing you how, the, how this thing works. And then I'm going to show you how to tip, do a spin check. So basically you put your machine on spin. When you turn it on, you grab uh, sort of in between here and here. Through uncertain then um don't try this at home the way i normally do it is i'll turn on the spin cycle and if you have a uh, door lock you're going to have to activate the door lock somehow to do this and if you turn it on and you put pressure here and your barrel does not spin then you probably need a new clutch okay so here we're going to try it It's got a good clutch. I just rebuilt this clutch, so this one's good. And you hear that squeak. It, 
it's not stopping abruptly but it does have a squeak which I might want to lube that brake Okay, let's try it again. So you turn it on, put your hand here. It's got a little bit of a funny noise to it. It's got a little bit of a funny noise to it. I'm not sure exactly what that is. I'm hoping it's going to go away, but maybe not. But if you put your hand here on the barrel, when you put it into spin and it does not spin, then you need a clutch. Okay, we're back here. Got the transmission out again. We're going to adjust that clicking sound. Um, you can actually see the pad. This is the base, one of the base pads. It looks pretty good. Got pretty good amount of uh, material left. So that clicking sound could be because this thing is a little bit stiff. Um, mainly the bearing. So right in here. It's actually a bushing and we can lube this area right in here that shaft in there where this thing sits on we're also going to lube this bell here where these brakes go we're also going to lube put a couple of drops here we don't want excess we want to keep uh, any oil off that clutch that silver thing this actually doesn't seem too stiff um, we're also going to lube the motor the motor shaft to make sure that that's running freely we're also going to check the water pump to see if the water pump is stiff <laughs> the water pump not too bad sometimes if there's something in this water pump um, it will cause that clicking sound and or the motor might not even start these motors have this overheat uh, fuse on them it's a resettable overheat fuse thermal cutoff fuse here if they heat up, they'll shut down. Um, if you have something stuck in your water pump, the motor could shut down. Okay, so another thing. The sticking could be caused by is a sock that's stuck between, between the basket and the, the barrel. So if there's a sock that got down in here, stuck between the basket inside you can actually look inside here and we can see um, actually right up here you can see there's a dark line right there and there may be a sock stuck right there causing that problem so if you look here the contrast between the light and the dark there could be a sock stuck right under here. And it's kind of hard to see from here. So we're going to have to take the front off and then look inside there. Okay, so how does this panel fit on the here? So here's a kind of a little tang that this back thing got has to fit into that back hole there's also a hole up here in the front this has to go underneath this front lip here that tang goes underneath this and you can see here this should have a clip that comes up like this one and if you're careful you can bring these back to life and just gently bend that up again then you have a little tang so that that'll catch now that has to be pushed down and straightened out and so these are pretty uh pretty forgiving uh, i think i've only busted one of these in like 10 years let me look at this one here this one back here is good the ones in front are normally the ones that give you a problem that one's already it's pushed in too far we need to bring it up and then actually we need to bend that whole thing up because it's sagging down and once we do that then we can put this thing on Okay, 
course, these have these screws here. One there and one there. On this particular model. These fenders have to come off the side. Disclaimer for you. This, this lid switch has already been bypassed. You can see how it's bypassed if you have a faulty lid switch. A lot of people do this. I just take that brown and that gray wire and attach them. That basically bypasses this lid switch here. And so to take this front off, we need to take these clips off. You can stick them in here somewhere where you remember you put them. And then just pull this thing back. If you look in here again, you can see kind of a dark spot right there. But look here. Looks like there's something in there. I'm not sure what it is. We'll soon find out. Basically, you have to push down in here. These clips come off. And just take this thing off <clears throat> look down in here there it is there's the sock right there That could cause problems, I'd say. It's like it's been in there for a long time. Luckily, we didn't burn the motor out. And if we try it, it's going to be working perfect, I would imagine. And there it is. Okay, so how does this panel fit on the here? So here's a kind of a little thing that this back thing got has to fit into. That back hole. There's also a hole up here in the front. This has to go underneath this front lip here. That tang goes underneath this. And you can see here, this should have a clip that comes up like this one. And if you're careful, you can bring these back to life and just gently bend that up again. Then you have a little tang so that that'll catch. Now that has to be pushed down and straightened out. And so these are pretty, uh, pretty forgiving. Uh, I think I've only busted one of these in like 10 years. Let me look at this one here. This one back here is good. The ones in front are normally the ones that give you a problem. That one's already just pushed in too far. We need to bring it up. And then actually we need to bend that whole thing up because it's sagging down. And once we do that, then we can put this thing on. Okay, so what I do is I put this end in first. I make sure it's lined up here and here. So that those little tangs are sticking up through those holes. Lines it flush, with that front tab underneath, and I just set it back down. And then we have to tuck this top part in, tuck this part in, line it up with the back, make sure that this is tucked in here, flush there. It's here, tight. And something on the other side, make sure that your lid switch is back plugged in again. Be sure that is plugged back in. Take a look back here, line it up. Push it in. 
brush there. Make sure you're good here. Um, then we can put our keepers back in. Just like that. So, yeah, that's your tip for today. If you need any help, you can contact me, 707-443-8347. I give phone advice for $25. Thanks for watching.